Why? Hello and welcome everybody. So today I wanted to go ahead and give you guys the skill tree guide of the 3.16 Righteous Fire Inquisitor. Now, this is not going to talk about the Trickster variant, the Marauder variants, or even a lot of itemization. This is not even necessarily like a full-on build guide. It's more of just a skill tree template of what I'll be following, and my guides will come out as I start playing through the league. So, with that being said, let's go ahead and start. So, starting off as the Templar Inquisitor, we're going to go ahead and branch through the early increased damage elemental damage scaling as everybody kind of wants early damage in the game um this elemental damage scaling favors us picking an elemental skill to level with it's really up to you it really doesn't make that much of a difference you can grab you know freezing pulse right away if you choose to use uh scorching ray at like level 12 at mr evil you can pretty much you know stay with degen the entire time so it's really up to you i'll have a more refined leveling style later but it's not too big of a deal uh coming into our life wheel over here the first thing we want to grab with our mastery is going to be the 50 flat life now if you feel comfortable uh that you're not dying you obviously do not have to get the 50 flat life you can go with vitality reservation you could also go with two percent life regen but we'll be picking those up shortly um from here we're going to move across and go right into our divine judgment uh the reason being is this is going to be a very big early source of damage uh which should help us a lot okay from here we're going to move on to 26 to 50 from here, um, you're going to go ahead and go straight down. Now, we're just getting our tree ready for Righteous Fire. So, going still down more, down more. Bam! Here we have a new uh, new wheel, which is basically a pure life regen wheel. So, life regen, life regen, life regen. I'm pretty sure that's a multiplier, uh, the increased life regen, along with life regen. Uh, from here, you've got the 2% life regen per second while moving, and you've got the Vitality Mono Reservation. Now, my chat just brought this up to me. Over here, uh, under Elemental Mastery, I forgot to select something. I highly recommend taking the early Elemental Res as it just helps with gearing, helps with getting your Righteous Fire going as soon as possible, and kicks us into the next thing. After you come and acquire your stuff down here, we are getting ready to run Righteous Fire, if not running it already, depending on how early you want to run it. Uh, coming up here, I just plugged in two points. You don't have to get this right away. You've got your first Fire Mastery Wheel and your first big damage over time source for Righteous Fire. So we've got four multi, six multi. Careful not to go to the bottom one. I always misclick it. It's Ignite Chance. Uh, and then you've got the actual Fire Res and Fire Multi. For here, I like picking Fire Mastery. The specific 20% Fire Damage over time multiplier is huge. Be careful of the minus 30 Fire Res downside. If you notice that you cannot actually run this early, do not pick the minus Fire Res. Instead, you could, for example, just get 20% chance for enemies to cover you in Ash when they hit you, or just don't take anything. It's okay. You can just come back to it and get it later. Uh, so for now, I'm just going to plug in my Fire Molt. Now, from here, you have two options. You can choose to go down towards the bottom side of the tree to be more tanky, or you can choose to go towards the right side of the tree to do more damage. Of course, I'm going to go for damage. Uh, we'll show the tanky side here momentarily. Now we have one of the most important clusters in the tree, and it is the only one that we can get. Now, before you think about anointing or using a Thread of Hope, you cannot anoint, use a Thread of Hope, use an Intuitive Leap. You cannot do any of those things to acquire Mastery Points. You physically have to travel to the point, allocate the actual Notable if you want to get the Mastery. The reason why the Mastery for here is so important is it is redu well, less damage taken from over time. This, along with stacking maximum fire resist, makes for very easy gearing for Righteous Fire. So this is a very big one. Coming up here, um, this is also the part where I was talking about splitting with your survivability if you want to be more tanky. So we're doing 51 to 75 here. So the big thing to note here is moving across over here, grabbing our Cruel Preparation. Now, you don't have to grab the 6% life node. I just like picking up 6% life nodes right away as they're just directly superior to 5 and with GGG nerfing the Scion Life Cluster, removing a couple of 1% nodes because Constitution used to be 14%, um, just taking the 6% Life Nodes feel a little bit more justified. Now, you'll notice I'm not picking up any more Life Mastery. That's because I don't really care for anything here. We absolutely do not want to reduce our Life Recovery. That's very bad. We do not want to... Well, I mean, nothing here really matters. I think a lot of players are going to fall into the trap of seeing Mastery and immediately just, like, picking it. You don't need to pick up every mastery for every single location. 
Mastery is supposed to be filling in what you want. It's supposed to uh, help a wide variety of builds gain use out of like a single cluster, right? So coming up over here, we've got fire damage, fire multi, fire multi, fire multi with increased fire. Again, don't go across the right side. This is just ignite. For here, we're taking the cover enemies and ash. And this brings me to a very interesting cluster, which I don't have allocated, but I need to test. For simply four points and then opening up a two point jewel socket, you can get a total of 30% recoup damage. I think it's, is it 30% chat? Yeah, you can get 30% damage recouped. This does not work for degens. It only works for on hit effects. So it doesn't actually recoup your RF. It's just really good for builds that can mitigate damage and like stay in everything's face because if they're not killing you, you're just out healing them to an extent. So anyway, moving across, you'll notice I allocated the uh, sovereignty wheel. The reason for the sovereignty wheel is if you actually look over here by running a purity of fire malevolence, this is supposed to be purity of elements, but I have determination as a placeholder because it takes 50% mana and Purity of Elements, at least as of now, has not been upgraded or updated to the 50% reservation. So by simply running a 50%, a 50% with a 35, no Enlighten, just taking Reservation Mastery, we're actually left with 8% mana. 8% mana is enough for, for most builds to work, right? So, I mean, it's pretty cool. By taking, I don't know if you guys know this, by taking Purity of Elements this early, we're actually immune to Ignite, Chill, Freeze, and Shock. And it, that's great. That's fantastic, right? So Purity of Elements, super sick. Also really helps with the abundance of Elemental Res. If you feel you're too high on the Elemental Res, um, you can remove this Mastery here that I have removed at the moment because, I mean, between Purity of Fire and Purity of Elements leveling, you're going to have so much bonus res. Now, hold on thought. That Purity of Elements does come in handy later. It's not just for the Elemental Immunity. I'll show you what I mean in a little bit. So moving down now, we're going to go ahead and enter our thick nodes here. Uh, this go around, I've opted out to not use endurance charges. It's always kind of annoying to sustain them. I don't like using the enduring cry for endurance charges. I like using enduring cry to heal me. It feels a lot more justifiable as a hybrid build. But again, you can always just plug them in. This is a template. So there's a lot of wiggle room for you. So coming down towards here, we're going to go ahead and grab Juggernaut uh, for our armor scaling. You'll notice I didn't take any armor mastery yet. It's because you want to take the armor mastery when you're capitalizing on your armor, not when you don't have a bunch of random hodgepodge pieces of gear when you're just like leveling through the axe, right? Going across, I've decided to ditch this wheel. I do not like the positioning of it. Um, it's okay if you want diamond skin, but like I have so much res, I don't want to spend five points to get measly life regen when I have an abundance of it on the tree. So this is why I've skipped it. If you feel you need the life regen, simply just put the points in and remove. Okay, moving across, uh, we've got Warrior's Blood, very big life regen, uh, and then coming up to Heart of the Warrior. Okay. Next part of the tree. This is our bread and butter right here. This is where we become tanky, right here. Moving across, we've got a 10 dex node. Ironically, that's big because uh, it's our only source of dexterity, but don't tell anybody yet, okay? All right, so we've got the 5% Eli res, which is bad. The one max fire res, if you don't want these nodes, you can swing across and just grab the two max Eli res. You're still getting three, three res for fire, which is great. I like the Eli res, I like being tanky, so I've allocated it. Now, I have not picked anything for this, but you're most likely going with Corrupted Blood. You could go with additional res. I'll just go with Corrupted Blood. It's pretty nice. Um, moving across down here, you've got Imbalance Guard, which may be very good only in the early leveling stages, and then it will be replaced when you have proper armor scaling. Now, I can't tell you how much armor we're going to have. I can just tell you that the build has all the tools for armor scaling. We'll continue on this further. Over here by Bloodless, Bloodless had a big life increase. It's got 6% life per, so 6, 12, 18, plus 10, that's 28, quick math. Um, then you've got Soul of Steel. Soul of Steel is giving us more res. Uh, on top of that, it gives us a base armor and then gives us more max res. So 4% max fire res. 1%, 2, 1 plus 2 is 3, plus 1 is 4. So that's pretty sick. Okay. At this point in time, I'm going to show you what else I've picked up and a few things that I've done. When you are higher level, you will stop running Vitality. 
If you want to min-max, you can run a level 1 Vitality if you get a good Watcher's Eye. That's for a different video, though. So I went and picked up Sanctum of Thought, mainly because of the 30% reduced extra damage from crits and scaling armor and ES. We'll get ES on Corrupted Soul for a little bit later. 20% uh, reduced effect of curses. Now, at this point here, we have our Cruel Lab and even uh, Merc Lab. So, normal lab, you pick up Sanctuary. It's a no-brainer. You're going full Consecrated Ground. Just close your eyes, go the Consecrated Ground route, right? Pretty self-explanatory. Does not help you very much. This is when it becomes big. Your life regen is mimicked to your ES regen. So if you have 800 life regen, you have 800 ES regen. If you get life recovery, your ES regen is scaled by your life recovery because your life regen is mimicked to your ES. So it almost like double dips it, right? Kind of cool. The next big thing is um, Consecrated Ground was buffed specifically for Inquisitor. So we get like 7.5% max life regen per second, which then hits our ES pool. So that's like 15 Furthermore, in the patch notes, Consecrated Ground now gives 50% resistant to curses. So 50% curse reduction. Then Inquisitor gets the 50% increase. So 75% resistant. Over here on this fancy node that I have, right over here, you can get 20% reduced effect of curses. This puts you at 95% curse reduction. You are essentially immune to curses. I can't really think of an example of, of, of when, like... That 5% reduction actually would not really do anything, right? You can choose to go into like a Pantheon and Yugol if you want. You're saving a skill point. Not really sure if it's worth trading that. That's just kind of a really cool interaction that comes in. All right. Um, let me see where else we went with these points. I think we started picking up AoE now. Um, probably want to grab this earlier. I don't remember what level I grabbed it, but basically once you're running Righteous Fire, you definitely want to grab Amplify. Um, you've also got Sanctity over here for one point. Very good for the armor scaling. Okay. I think I'm missing something, but I don't know exactly, but it's okay. All right, for this next part over here, I'm going to go drop in the 100 plus. So over here, I'll just... There we go. Oh, they're basically the same. It doesn't really matter. So um, for the most part, once you have proper armor scaling you have the ability to take Divine Shield. I don't know how big Divine Shield is going to be for us for mitigation. It's definitely not going to hurt us. It doesn't hurt you in any way. It just makes it so extra damage that you mitigate is going to help heal your energy shield. Your energy shield will degen because RF is going to hit your ES first, right? So this is just another layer to kind of help protect you. So from here on, uh, this is where we get a very, very, very nice new spot for Tempered by War. If you guys remember Tempered by War, it's the one from Lethal Pride, which makes it so 50% of your cold and lightning hit your fire. So now we got to do a little bit of calculator math here real fast. Okay, handy dandy calculator. So base res is 75. Max res is 90, right? So our goal is to hit 90 fire res because we want to mitigate as much fire damage as possible. So 75. A level 20 purity of fire gives us 4 max res. Having a level 23 Purity of Fire is 5 max res. The best way to get a 23 Purity of Fire is putting it in an unset ring for plus 3 or plus 2. Remember, you can corrupt it to be level 21. So 21 plus 2 is 23, right? If you have a plus 1 Fire Scepter and a plus 1 Fire Amulet, 21 plus 2 is 23. Alternatively, you could put this in your gloves so you could have Purity of Fire, Purity of Elements, <clears throat> your Malevolence, and then you could put it in your gloves for plus 1 AoE gems, so then you only need plus one on your weapon or plus one on your amulet. This puts us to 80 res. Using a very, very, very affordable, unique early game called Rise of the Phoenix gives us five max res. <clears throat> Excuse me. 80 plus five puts you at 85. 85 plus one, 86. Plus two, 88. <clears throat> plus Soul of Steel, 89. Plus Barbarism, 90. Sorry about that. So, we get 90% on our gear without, without really min-maxing much with the Rise of the Phoenix. The only thing you really need to do is squeeze in the, the 23 Purity of Fire which is not that big of a deal. 
it, it's really not that big of a deal. It's definitely, definitely manageable. Okay, so with that being said, there's really not too much else to talk about. The um, the other thing, I guess, is, is going through to the Tempered by War. So, Tempered by War is a notable that makes it so 50% of our cold and lightning hit our fire, which is fantastic because we have 90% max fire res. We're also running, I think, 79 cold and lightning res. You have 75 plus armor master or uh, solid steel 76. Then you have 77 and then 78, 79. So that's pretty sick, right? Now, the reason why I like Tempered by War is its ability to buff other nodes around it. So, Lethal Pride, what it does is, is it picks notables around. So, in this spot we have here, it hits one, two, three, four, five. And if you use Endurance Charges, it'll hit six nodes. Each one of these has the potential to roll. Where is it? 1% life regen, um, you've got 20% armor, you've got uh, physical damage from hits taken as fire, which is one of my favorites, you've got 20% burn damage, you have 4% life, and that's pretty much about it. Yeah, endurance charge on kill. So a lot of min-maxing can be done here with your lethal pride setup. But I think that this is a great spot to put it. Um, you don't even have... This is normally agnostic, so you barely have to even path. It's literally just one point. So if we do the breakdown here on, on our character. So we have 4,000 life, just at level 90 with no gear. So we've got we've got HP. HP is not really a problem. We are immune to fire, ice, uh, lightning, ailment effects because of purity of elements. We have 95% curse reduction with no gear. We take <clears throat> reduced critical strike damage over here, right? We also take reduced critical strike damage from the actual armor notables. So another source of reduced critical strike damage. We do not need an enlighten to min-max our auras. So that's already kind of set. I mean, there's a lot of min-maxing that can be done with the build, but this is just like, you know, with basic stuff or just getting everything off, which is so nice because normally you would, you would really rely on cluster jewels for this. The only downside is the lack of AoE. To acquire AoE, you can drop some nodes and get like, say, Explosive Impact, or maybe on your gear, we can figure out something to get more AoE. But that's pretty much the rundown with the character. So I hope you guys had a wonderful time. I hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. Uh, don't forget, if you have any questions, feel free to drop them down below. Don't forget, if you like the video, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget, you can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash pox. Take care. See you guys all tomorrow. Thanks for watching.